New tonight, Jonathan Major's former girlfriend has filed a civil lawsuit accusing the actor of escalating abuse as well as defamation. Grace Jabari filed a suit in Manhattan federal court today claiming Major subjected her to escalating incidents of physical and verbal abuse from uh -oh. 2021 to 23. Jonathan Major Let me pause it right there. If you guys can hear me in the chat, put a one or two in the chat. No, one in the chat. Here we go. Here we go. Doing a quick stream. I'm not going to be on here long, but... I just wanted to put this up for now because uh, lots going on. Here we go. Jers, known for his amazing acting in big Hollywood movies, is now in the middle of some legal drama. His ex-girlfriend, Grace Jabari, is suing him for assault and defamation. Without any further ado, let's get into this whole new drama. I know I wanted to ask you last question. Yeah. I mean, I know your ex is, you know, filed another lawsuit against you. I mean, how have you been? How another have you been one. Yeah. <laughs> He was like, he was like another one. Uh oh, and another one. I mean, I mean we're not, I'm not surprised. You're you not know. surprised? No, I knew it was coming for uh, in, from the beginning. Really. Yeah. Okay. I mean, how do you feel about it? I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're ready to put this all behind you. <laughs> I, I am ready to put it behind me. I, I can't say much else about it though. So Jonathan Majors is getting. He said, "I can't do. I want to put it behind me, but I can't do nothing about it." Let's, let's see what's, what else is going on. Here we go. His ex-girlfriend, Grace Jabari, she's accusing him of assault, battery, and defamation for stuff that happened between 2021 and 2023. Last December, Majors got in trouble for harassing and assaulting Jabari in New York City. Jabari filed her lawsuit in federal court in New York on Tuesday. Mm. She's claiming that Majors assaulted her, caused emotional distress, falsely accused her, and defamed her. The defamation part is because Majors went on Good Morning America and said he never laid a hand on a woman. But in the trial, Majors lawyer Priya Chaudhary kept saying that Jabari was lying about her injuries from the incident in March 2023. So John and Grace crossed paths in 2021 when he was shooting Marvel's Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania in London. Yeah, they I always wanted to find out where they met. ...off and started dating. While Majors was busy with season two of Marvel's Loki series in 2022, they decided to move in together in a London apartment. However, things took a dark turn. Grace claims in her lawsuit that she experienced physical and emotional abuse as well as controlling behavior from Jonathan during their relationship. Wow, that's deep. Okay. She also alleges that he would threaten self-harm if she tried to break up with him. In a 2022 incident in Los Angeles, Grace's lawsuit claims that John got mad at Grace. It scared her, so she tried to calm him down, but he started yelling at her and grabbed her arms, holding them tight against her body. Then he forcefully pushed her into the shower door, making it open. And he also pushed her against the shower wall, making her hit her head on it. As Grace tried to run away, things got even worse. She told Jonathan that she would have to tell his team about what he did to her. That made John go crazy and start throwing candles and stuff, which messed up the wall and broke glass all over the floor. Damn. We, well, I mean, let's see what happens. Floor. Well, in another incident that took place in the same year in London, this lawsuit claims that Jonathan pushed Grace really hard, leaving a bruise on her backside. When Grace got up, she tried to leave the house, but then John grabbed her and threw her against the car. Grace started yelling for help, but Majors forcefully grabbed her, put her in a headlock, and covered her mouth so no one could hear her cries. He dragged Grace back into the house and put his hands around her neck, threatening to kill her. He even started hitting her head against the marble floor while choking That's what she's claiming, by the way her until she couldn't breathe anymore. The lawsuit also reveals these text messages between the couple where Jonathan Majors convinced Grace not to get medical help and even threatened to end his own life. Some parts of these texts were brought up during the trial in December 2023, but they were only considered as background info and not as evidence for the March 2023 incident. Jonathan is on info. Very interesting. Okay. Going to be sentenced next month for his conviction in December 2023. After being convicted, Marvel fired him from his role as Kang the Conqueror and his bodybuilding movie, Magazine Dreams, was taken off Searchlight's release calendar. Despite his acting career facing challenges, he was recently seen at the NAACP Awards last weekend with his girlfriend, Megan Good. How are you? Looking good? I know. I mean, I see your trainer here. Are, I mean, what are you training for? Work. <laughs> work? Okay. What, what, what kind of work? Like a project? Any acting or anything? Yeah. Oh my. It looks like John Majors isn't worried about Grace Jabari's lawsuit against him, but he is definitely putting in the work to train for a potential new movie role.
TMZ caught up with the actor on Wednesday in LA as he was leaving the gym with his trainer, Jason Best. The actor was happy to chat while walking out shirtless and showing off his ripped physique. By the way, Best is the same dude who got him all ripped for his bodybuilding gig in Magazine Dreams and obviously, they're still a team. Cause Jonathan is looking awesome in this video. So TMZ had a chat with John about- well, I, have, I have to admit, he's, he's, he's kept himself up, but I mean, what, he's in his 30s. Most men should look, look, look like him in this, their 30s, but they just, you know, y'all be letting yourselves go, here we go. Few things happening in his life at the moment, including a possible movie project he's rumored to be involved in, the specifics are still a bit unclear. Jonathan did mention that he's getting fit for work, and when they questioned if it was for the movie role, he didn't exactly say no. The TMZ reporter also had a chat with Jonathan about his relationship with Megan Good, and it seems like things are going really well for them. They've been attending public events together and showing lots of affection. TMZ asked Jonathan what sets Megan apart from his previous girlfriends and his response. Could Megan be, could Megan be a Sonya? Could Megan be a Sonya? We, 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 will, we will never know. Strongly suggests that she has captured his heart and more. He referred to Megan as his heart and credited their strong connection for their success as Thanks a couple. for life in the house. Couple. What's so different about Megan for Yona other in past the house. relationships? India in the house. Let's keep it going. Um, my heart. Yeah. Oh, she's your heart. I mean, why do you guys think you work so well as a couple? Uh, connection. Connection? Yeah. Okay. I love that for Understanding, you. Understanding. Love. This conversation with TMZ comes just a day after news broke that his ex, Grace Jabari, who testified against him in a criminal trial, has sued him. She claims that he assaulted her during their relationship and defamed her. Let's not forget that Jonathan was also convicted of misdemeanor assault and harassment in December and is currently waiting for his sentencing. His legal team is trying to get the conviction overturned, and they weren't surprised by Grace's lawsuit. On Wednesday, Jonathan expressed a similar sentiment, saying that he just wants to move on from the whole situation, or at least he's trying to. Yeah. Hello. See, that's the problem. Um, I'm not saying... The bottom line is this, is that a lot of people, they like to think they can do people wrong, and then it, whatever the, what would you call it, the accountability, they just want the accountability just to go away. That part, they're not, they're not into being accountable for their own actions. However, you know, they want to co continue to be in bandit mode or whatever mode you want to call it. Jonathan, how you doing? Oh, I do sincerely hope he is treating Megan good, good. I really do, sincerely. See, man. How cool is it to be here with Megan tonight in the Image Awards? That's for us. It's incredible. Uh, it feels great. Uh, I love everything she does, and uh, I'm glad she's being uh, acknowledged today, you know, yeah. by us. So, uh, amen. Megan Good and her boyfriend Jonathan Majors had a fancy night out at the NAACP Image Awards in Los Angeles on Saturday. It was their first time attending a big awards show together since Jonathan's assault conviction in December 2023, which was unrelated to Megan. During an interview on the red carpet, Megan shared how she's feeling during this crazy time in her career and personal life. She mentioned that she's in love, going through a transition, healing, growing, and getting excited about what's to come. She expressed- yeah, this is gonna be very interesting. That's, that's what I, you know, I'm gonna stop it right there because you know what else is there to say. I'm gonna have this gentleman talk a few things and then we're going into- Lessons, the Mark the Messenger, we're back in the video. Man, I'm so excited to make this video because this type of video is going this to is save Mark the messenger. life. A lot of you guys have demons in your life and you have yeah. no idea. Now, it is up to you with this video. I'm going to give you guys the information. It is up to you to, you know, remove those demons, take those demons out, use your own discernment, using, you know, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, being led by the Holy Spirit. But, you know, right. I mean, ba basically, he is very religious, but um, those who are not religious, you can still um, take some great advice from him. Let's, let's listen. Here we it's go. Messenger. So let's get, let's go. If you have already, make sure you guys like the video and subscribe to the channel. The number one sign, someone's a demon. This is the number one sign. Y'all know nothing is ever in order, but this is number one. Demons will always attempt, okay? They will always attempt to provoke you to rage, to provoke you to wrath, to provoke mm, you to Very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah.
That they, I, I, I can, I can attest to that. They will try to make you. Let's listen to what he said again. Let's listen to this again. Here we go. Always attempt. Okay, they are always attempt to provoke you to rage, to provoke you to wrath, to provoke you to anger. Okay, this is another form of energy harvesting to draining your energy, which I'm going to talk about. And that two. is such a damn good point. Very damn good point. Demons will always attempt to provoke you to rage, anger. That speaks volumes right there. Okay. The main goal of a demon is to get you to jump out of character because when you jump out of character, now you're more prone to doing things out of regret. Now, now you're more prone to doing things out of emotion. Okay. And through a lot of emotion, mm -hmm. doing things out of character, yeah. you're going to wake up the next day. You know, why did I do that? Because that demon provoked you. Okay, this is a spiritual warfare, and demons love to get you to go out of the character. Demons love to get you to operate out of God's will in your life. So now you could be, you know, like them, you know, back going back and forth. And best believe, when you go back and forth with a demon, you're now lowering yourself, and that demon is going to beat you with experience. Okay, because demons are all, they're only used to being staying down low, being a demon, you know, being on demon time, being demonic. They're used to that. But you being a child of God, you being a chosen one. I mean, maybe we used to do that in the past, but we overcame that, okay? We had the Holy Spirit to let us all things, and now we're, we don't need to troll and scoff and, you know, always be led to debate. We don't got to do that, okay? So one thing about what a demon does, they love to do this. They love to provoke you, to get you to go out yeah. of here, to get you to be mad, angry. That is so true. In the house, the LW Academy Hub for Women, 110% facts, DJ. Thank you, LW. Good seeing you. Very good. Okay, and you have to understand your solution to this is to ignore them. Demons hate when you ignore them because when you ignore them, oh. now you know they're not gaining your energy, which I'm going to go with number yeah. two, which I'm going to explain that more. Demons are energy vampires. Okay, They love to drain you. The only way a demon could drain you of your energy, okay, this is the main way, is by mm. giving them your energy. And how, they, how, they, how the, a demon gets you to give them your energy? By going back and forth. Getting yeah. your when you go back and forth with demons... When you go back and forth with them, they're loving it. They like that back and forth. They like that, that you can call it beef. You can call it, you know, roasting back and forth. You can call it, you know, drama, whatever. They love it. They love it. They, they, they feed off of it. That's what makes them feel good in life. Because demons usually feel bad in life in any way that they can take you know, their mind off of feeling bad, they will do that and they will use you to do it. To get you out of character, to get you to be mad, angry, and rage, you know, to get you to be wrathful, okay, to get you to sin, okay? That's the main thing to what a demon does. So your best solution when, he, when you're dealing with these demons in spiritual warfare, put on the belt, uh, the belt of truth and the boots of peace and, you know, never go back and forth with a demon, okay? Once you understand, once you have discernment, and for those who do not have discernment, I highly recommend you all ask God for the gift of the Holy Spirit and him to give you, to increase your discernment, to give you the gift of discernment, the gift of the Holy Spirit. So you can now operate and see these demons being work, working through these vessels. Okay. Demons are Satan's children. What is the goal of Satan? To steal, kill, and destroy. Yep. They don't even know. I, they don't even know they are behaving like Satan's children. They are. Well, they do and they don't. They do and they don't. But they were, even if they did, they wouldn't admit it. Boy, that is the same thing that demons do too as well, okay? They're fulfilling their master's will, okay? The children of God are fulfilling uh, the God of Israel, you know, his, his will in uh, your life. And then the demons, Satan's children, they're fulfilling Satan's will, okay? Whether they're doing this unknowingly or willingly, okay? So please take heed. Please, you guys got to understand this. Back then, I would always go going back and forth with these demons, and I just feel drained. Okay, and that's what demons want. They want you to feel drained. They want you to feel worthless and useless. They want you to operate under those negative emotions. That could also open the door to, you know, wanting to do things that you will regret harming yourself. Okay, you know, feeling lowly of yourself. That's what the demons want. Okay, or maybe you, yep. you react physically and now you're in jail. Maybe you might have done something that might face you. Yeah. That brings us to our next clip. This is very sad. Here we go. Man has been charged with the murder of a 19-year-old woman. Police say she was stabbed to death outside of Bodega in Brooklyn when she refused to oh, get... I'm stopping it right here because it's a very important point I have to make is, 
there's a certain group on YouTube that promotes protection provision of women, but it's at a price. And that price is, is that you have to be submissive to them. And we're going to go over that very soon. The LW Academy Hub breaks it down like this. Okay, I got to go, but I have to circle back around for the replay if you're, if you're off by the time I get back. <laughs> yep, yep, I get back. Steal, kill, dest- and destroy. Yep, that's the only thing they do. Bars. Bars Academy. Here we go. Give him his number. All right, Fox 5's Linda Schmidt joins us live from Park Slope. And Linda, you're hearing the suspect actually turn himself in. Yeah, he absolutely did that today. He showed up here at the 7A precinct. He turned himself in, and he had his lawyer with him at the time. Now, the 19-year-old victim and her twin sister, they were together last Sunday, and that is when she was stabbed to death. And police say the reason he did it is because she rejected him. Did you hear that? She was stabbed to death, and police say the reason he did it is because she rejected him. If you knew the twin, evil, evil, evil. This is terrible. So that's you know what it is. She got out of pocket. That's the issue. That's the issue. Is that she got out of pocket? You know, she got out of pocket. And that reminds me of this other, this other video. Let me go to it real quick. Uh, It just hit me right now. So, you know, this is, uh, let me get to it. Here we go. MPGV Crime Podcast. Good seeing you. Welcome. Okay. So where is that video? Here we go. Where is it? Where? There we go. Is it? Concept, like for example, when a man is telling us to chill. You're in a halfway house? Yeah. Okay, Um. what did you do? Long story short, it involved uh, a lot of guns, a lot of attempted murders. That is a form of protection. That really? Are you sure? I mean, see, the problem is, is that people don't tell you what the protection is from. And if it's from the people that are supposed to protect you, then how is that protection? How's that protection? If the people that are supposed to protect you are the problem, that's not a deal. You know, remember Kevin Samuel, oh, that's a bad deal. Well, what's the bad deal? You know, what's the bad deal? You know, that's what we have to talk about today. What is the bad deal? Um, oh, smart move, JD. Yep. So let me play a little bit more of this. This man approached me and was asking for my phone number and, you know, calling me all these names. A Nashville woman's BM in the house says she was terrified when a man started destroying her car after she turned down his advances. When a man say, hey, don't wear that. Don't go there. Don't engage. But men don't do that. Women say that to men. That's the problem that you're having, young lady. Basically, the thing is, is this, is that there's a, a myth that 
men, we we provide protection and provision, but don't. In reality, we don't. It just, I mean, there's no stat, especially in our community, that says anything like that, that supports anything like that. So the, the reason I'm bringing that up is that this myth about protection and provision, it's eking out in the streets in very bad ways because it's giving our community the disbelief that Women are protected when in reality this is going on. It's because she rejected him. If you know the twin. It's because she rejected him. And that is when she was stabbed to death. And police say the reason he did it is because she rejected him. If you know the twins, for 19 years of their life, no one deserves to lose a child. She did not deserve that. <laughs> She did not deserve that. That mom? Now let me break, let's break something down. No community is perfect. No community is perfect at all. Um, but why in our community are we the ones? Why do we have to be at the on the on the good side of things? Why are we near the lowest side of things? Let's put it that way. Will never be the same. Samaya Spain, just 19 years old, stabbed in her neck and chest at this deli in Park Slope, Brooklyn, after a chance encounter with 20 year old Veo Kelly. Her twin sister was slashed on her arm. Her dad, Stephen, is lost. Those are his twins, those are his babies. The parents asking Yvette Ramos, a lifelong friend, to speak on their behalf. Police say Kelly, who had too much to drink, flew into a rage when Samaya would not give him her phone number. She oh, I guess she got out of pocket. I guess she got out of pocket, huh? That's just simply horrible. See, see, this is what happens. He thought she got out of pocket and he took Chantel's advice. She and her sister did not know Kelly, had never seen him before. But to pacify him, she gave him her Instagram handle. Okay, she don't want to give you her number. She gave you her Instagram. That still don't give a reason to kill her. Delhi owner Mohammed Albahar watched the girls grow up. They and their family frequent his store. We feel really broken hearts, you know. Authorities say Kelly has at least one prior arrest for robbery. He turned himself in this morning at the 7-8 precinct. I spoke with LaShawn, her mom, and she would like to thank the detectives on the case. 7-8 got a good team for homicide, and they did their job. They did their job, and I thank them from the bottom of my heart. So, so black men in our community, where, where's our protection provision that we are? I mean, how did, how did this, how did this man get to do this? Why did he do it? It's terrible. Simply terrible. Well, this was uh, supposed to be a short live. I'm going to keep my promise on that. Everyone, thank you for coming through. This is DJ Torch, and I'm out of here.